Hey everyone, my favorite thing to do in Japan is to go to the onsen. So I thought I would teach you how to onsen because I know for the newcomer it can be intimidating. You don't quite know what to do. I've gathered a lot of questions and I was recently sponsored by Ibaraki. That's a prefecture just, you know, this way outside of Tokyo, so fairly close, uh, to film and I had some extra footage from a place and I thought, hey, let's answer questions about onsen, ryokan, sentos, everything. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to let you know is where to go because there's a lot of different terminology you kind of need to know. And the first thing is sento, which means public bath. It's pretty simple. And these things kind of like date back quite a few years because in houses in Japan, they didn't have baths. So they'd go to the public bath to bathe themselves. So that's kind of the purpose for them. Um, nowadays, we have a lot more options. You sometimes might hear onsen and sento and get confused about what they are. So sento is public bath and onsen means hot spring. Uh, but you can have hot springs inside of a public bath. So you can have an onsen inside of a sento. And sometimes people use the words interchangeably. So I'm going to the sento, I'm going to onsen. It can mean the same thing. So it just depends on where you are and who's using the language. Now, if you really do want natural hot springs, then you want to ask for tennen onsen. And I'll put the kanji up there. So those are the real deal. They're not tap water or they're not like flavored with other stuff. Now, if you're inside of a place that is called tennen onsen, there's actually a hot spring law in Japan. And so it either has to have a certain composition of like minerals, chemicals, or it has to be 25 degrees Celsius or hotter. It's an or thing, as far as I've researched. Some places you read online will say it needs to have both of those conditions, but as far as I can tell, it's either 25 degrees Celsius or hotter, or it has to contain certain chemicals. Okay, so let me throw some terminology at you. Sento equals public bath, but super sento, or super sento, that's a public bath but it's more spa-like, it can have food, so there's places to eat. You can also have like relaxation chairs and tatami mats, so places to relax. You can get massages there. It's kind of more of an entertainment facility type of function. Uh, those are really popular. And then there's ryoka. Ryoka is like a traditional Japanese inn, and these places are a lot pricier because they'll usually feed you your dinner and your breakfast and they're really nice and lovely. The service is great and they almost always feature onsens as well. Sometimes you can have them inside of your actual room if they're fancier or sometimes they're, you know, general public ones. Sometimes they're family ones you can rent out, but that's ryokan. Now the thing about ryokans is even though if you want to stay over, it can be pricey, you don't actually have to stay overnight on, in some of them. Some of them allow you to um, go into the general onsen area or uh, reserve some of those private baths uh, during the daytime. So you can ask and inquire. If you don't know Japanese, try to find a Japanese friend that can do that for you. Or maybe there is an English friendly uh, ryokan that could help you out. But you do have to inquire about if it's open and if you do want to get in there, then you have to, usually you can't reserve in advance as far as I've experienced. You have to go to the actual facility and then see what spot they have free. Oh yeah, about the cost. It's about a thousand yen is what you'd pay for going to the general admission into a ryokan's onsen, which is about $10 US. So it's not that crazy, the price, even though it's in a nice ryokan. But again, it depends on the facility. All right, so what do you bring to go into the baths. I'll just call it onsen from now on, even though it might be sento or <laughs> whatever. I'm just gonna call it onsen for taking a bath, okay? Um, well, what you need to bring really depends on the place. Um, some places they'll give you a small towel and then a bigger towel and they'll have the soap, shampoo, conditioner, even like some shaving stuff, which I could use, um, and other things, right? Blow dryers and they have the works. Other places, you either have to rent or buy these things. So if you're going to the basic sento, you might need to bring your towels and your shampoo, hair conditioner, body soap, all that kind of stuff. So you really just need to figure that out before you go. Um, and some places they will uh, sell you 
uh, these items or rent you these items. Although soaps, I, am, I don't know if I've ever seen a place that doesn't have it sell me soap, but they almost all places will rent towels at least or let you buy the little towels. You'll also want to bring some 100 yen coins. That's because they have coin lockers and you put your 100 yen coin in and uh, lock the locker and you'll get that coin back. It's always a refundable or returnable amount. You can also use those 100 yen coins to buy some milk afterwards or in the massage chairs. So that's nice. Now when you go to an onsen, what you don't bring is your shoes. So there's always like a genkang or an entrance area and you take off your shoes, put them in a, usually it's some locker and then you go to, I guess, the admissions place and, and pay. You can buy tickets from a machine or you just go to a staff. Depends on the place. And another thing you don't bring is tattoos. Now, I did, this is like a, a really huge question that I get from a lot of people. So I did a bit of research on this. And I also have some, I guess, personal stories from my brothers who have tattoos and what they've done. Um, so online, I was looking at it. And it seems like... The places that will allow tattoos, it can range anywhere from 30 to 50% of places will allow tattoos. Um, my feeling, it, like, it really depends on the area uh, and how used they are to foreigners. So I think maybe in cities, it's probably easier to get away with a tattoo, whereas in more rural areas, they might be a little bit, you know, not used to it. Um, so the reason behind tattoos is because tattoos were associated with the Yakuza, which are Japanese gangsters and people didn't feel comfortable with gangsters next to them, so they banned the tattoos. Um, but that could be a false story about that's the reason they banned it. Um, it could be also police are trying to crack down on places that Yakuza could go, and this was kind of their workaround to, okay, let's not allow tattoos in the bathing places because they can, you know, chat and talk there and do things there. So, um, and since in Japan, tattoos largely equaled Yakuza, banned for whatever reason, it, there's a big stigma around, uh, like, especially like, like, you know, tattoo sleeves or full body tattoos. Um, even though nowadays people can understand that foreigners do it for more like fashion purposes, it's, it can make the older clientele, is what I'm told, feel uncomfortable. So that's why some places do ban. Now, some places do allow the workaround of putting a bandage on it. So if you say have like a credit card size tattoo or smaller, you can get a waterproof bandage. Um, you can buy them in Japan or bring them with you and put it over top. And it's kind of a, um, well, some places would say if you do that, you're okay. Other places it's a don't ask, don't tell. Because if you ask them, can I cover my tattoo up? They might say no. But if you had your tattoo covered up, they don't actually know what's under there. So they can't say anything. Um, I've never heard of anybody getting kicked out for having they're like a small tattoo covered up with a bandage. Um, but I can't guarantee that you won't be asked to leave either. Um, I'll also leave in the description a couple sites where I found that um, they have laid list tattoo friendly places in Japan that you can go to openly with your tattoos. And an alternative to covering up your tattoos is you can rent, uh, you can go to the Yokan and have the private onsen right in your bedroom or you don't have that type of money you could go and rent out a, a private bath or like maybe sometimes called kazuko kazokuburo which means family bath and you don't have to be a family to go in there you can go there as a couple if you're transgender you could also go there um it's essentially your own private bath do with what you want of course you have to follow the rules but i mean you can wear tattoos in there all right uh okay so the pricing on that is about, it could be 2,000 to 3,000 yen is what I would expect for an hour or 50 minutes. And that's 20 to $30 US. All right. So what do you do? You're inside the facility. You've taken off your shoes. What's next? Well, you have to figure out the correct door to go in because they don't always say women's and men's. But generally, the kanji, I'll put it up on the screen. The kanji for woman is there. And the country for men is there, and women will be red, men will be blue, on average. And if all else fails, just look at who's going in, and you'll probably go into the right one. Just, you know, see. Now, once you're in, you get naked. Uh, because, yes, in Japanese bathing, you gotta be completely nude. Uh, that's just the thing. 
And once you're nude, you put all your stuff inside of a locker and maybe some smaller places, they don't have a locker and they have a basket. Uh, and, and at some of these places, they'll have like little like lockers where you can put like your keys, or your cell phone outside of the change room where you can lock it up. So if you're really worried about your stuff, you can check in and see where you can put it. Usually there's a place to lock up your valuables, although in Japan's pretty safe. So you're probably fairly safe as well. So you don't have to worry too much. Um, now, once you're completely naked and you have your small little towel, uh, you can go inside and you have a few options. And this one, I think it really depends on the place and your style and whatnot. Um, but you might have a big thing of, well, I don't know, big thing of water, but you might have a thing, here, well, look at this. This is my, this is not it, but maybe something this size, maybe double the size. Uh, it'll be like really about, you know, waist height. And there would be some buckets there and you're meant, it's called kakeyu, and you're meant to put the water on yourself with that bucket. And the official reason I believe is you want to warm up your extremities. So like your hands and your feet first, and then you warm up your whole body. So everything matches uh, the same temperature. So when you go into the onsen, that your body's not shocked. So it's a, it's a warm up type of thing. Um, but it could also work as a rinse type of thing where you're like washing all you know the sweat and dirt and oils off of your body and your hair and whatnot. So there's that. Now this is where depending on where you go, what you read, you'll get different advice. Some places it'll be okay. So we have these little stools and you know shower facilities and soap and shampoo. So completely wash your body and then go and hop into the onsen. Other places they're like. Okay, you like rinse off all your body of stuff, but don't soap yet. Go soak in a bath for like five minutes or something or 10 minutes. And then you go soap off your body and rinse. And the reason behind not completely soaping up before uh, you enter the baths is because when you enter the baths, it'll um, open up your pores and it'll like soften up stuff so that you can actually get more dirt off. Um, I'd say follow what the locals seem to be doing. I've seen it both places. And in some really smaller places, um, they won't actually have like soap or um, shampoo, like washing facilities. They'll just have a bucket next to the actual onsen and you're supposed to use that bus bucket and, you know, get your body as clean as possible before going in. So there's different styles. Yeah. Now, once you're getting in, um, what you're officially supposed to do is not going all the way. So just go in up to your like waist. And then after you go into like, you know, neck deep, if you want. And that's so your body doesn't get shocked and whatnot. I'm either young, foolish or relatively young, I'll say I'm not that young, but I just, you know, I don't jump in, but I go in fairly fast and I've been fine. But I, you know, the average age of people in Japan is quite up there. So, you know, maybe if you're 70, you're jumping right in. That's not the smartest idea. Yep. Um, now, what you don't want to do when you jump in is don't physically jump in, but also don't put your towel in because your towel is considered dirty and don't put your hair in as well. So uh, with me, it's not a big problem, but don't, don't, don't dunk your head in. And if you're female, you can use like a ties or a towel or whatnot and just don't put your hair in the water even if you've washed it because the water can clog the drains and blah 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 okay so we have these towels by the way and i've heard some people call them modesty towels i can only speak from the the male perspective because that's the only ones i've been into is i don't think guys really cover up that much or they don't really care so there'll be guys just walking around and have the towel on top of their head or in their hand it doesn't seem to be a big deal um, I've heard from women, sometimes they cover up like this and, you know, cover up their parts. Uh, I think, but I've also heard women just, you know, proudly marching along. So I think whatever works for you, it doesn't matter. Everyone's naked. So, <laughs> yeah. Now talking, I've had this question pop up about, you know, what are the noise levels? And even if you've ridden trains in Tokyo in the morning, like on the commute, they can be quite silent. So you'd think, oh, okay, so I'd have to be really quiet in an onsen. 
but actually it's uh, kind of a meant, you know, it's, it's a place where you can communicate and talk with people. Um, I think certain places have different vibes, so you read the vibe, I think. Um, but if you're talking like, you know, softly to someone like in a library type of level, um, I don't see at all how you'd get in trouble. But if you're being rowdy and like boisterous, um, at certain places you might get, you know, some stares or, you know, like a, a talking to, <laughs> um, a not so nice talking to. Uh, but also you might have people come to you and ask you questions and just strike up a conversation. So don't be scared about that as well. It, it can happen. I've actually, one of my friend, good friends in Japan, I made, I made at the onsen, so. On to don'ts. So don'ts is, um, okay, so at Super Sentos, Super Sentos, you can find um, more than just the bats. You can find saunas. And with the saunas, you get all sweaty and hot. So afterwards, don't jump straight into a bath. What you're supposed to do is maybe with the kakeyu, that, you know, place with the water, or maybe the shower, rinse yourself off with all that sweat, and then go into the baths. And at saunas, they have, if they have a sauna, they'll almost always have a cold bath they can go in. So you can go in there and get nice and cold again. So once you're actually done doing your, you know, own setting, <laughs> your bathing, um, what you do is kind of mixed. <laughs> and this guess, depends on the quality of the water, the place, your skin sensitivity, uh, what's normal. But some people say don't rinse off because you're going to rinse off all the good minerals from a natural hot spring, ten nen onsen. Um, so if you're in a place like that, you can just kind of really like drip dry or like kind of like, you know, pat dry. That can work. And then you go into the change room, you know, dry off. They have fans sometimes uh, and do that. So that's one style. Another style is, I mean, especially if you have sensitive skin, then you can totally like actually even soap again and then rinse off. Other people just use like um, just the rinse from the shower or the kakeyu and, uh, you know, rinse off. So it really depends on your style. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. Um, but in a places that it's maybe it's not the natural water and there's a lot of volume of people, you might want to, you know, soap off again, right? Um, as clean as Japanese onsens are, yeah. Um, but before you get into the change room, what you want to make sure is that you're not dripping wet. So what you can do is take that small little towel and like, you know, wipe off your whole body and then wring it out and uh, make sure you're not dripping around when you go into the change room. And then once you go into the change room, you take your bigger towel and you can dry off completely. Okay. And after that, what you want to do is hydrate. So you lose, you know, you sweat a lot in the onsen, they're hot. So you can um, drink water, you should drink water, but you can also bring bottles of water like this into the onsen if you want. A lot of them have water fountains, uh, but again, depends on the place. And after, uh, milk is a popular thing to consume, so sometimes they even have vending machines right inside of the change rooms, especially at like Supacentos, and you can just have some milk as well. So, but yeah, you should hydrate. Okay, I had a lot of questions from the community, so thanks for asking, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. So one was price. So if you're going to a basic cento, I think there's actually a set price around 400 and something yen, but if you say like 500 yen about that, that's how much you'll pay, that's like $5 US. Um, now if you're going to a super cento or some nicer facilities, you might pay 1,000 or 1,500, but I say around 1,000 is generally a decent, like for a decent place, expect to pay that, so like 10 bucks US. Maybe if you're going to like a special theme park one or a really nice one, you could get up into the 2000 or 2500, but that's fairly rare, I'd say. Um, how do you book one? Most places you can just go in, you get a ticket or go to the counter, and that's it. You don't book an onsen. Now, if you want to book a private one, that's where you would have to probably go to the facility and see if they have an opening slot and then book it. I don't think I've successfully booked one by phone or my wife has. Um, I don't think you do them online, but I could be wrong. There's like thousands of these places, so that could happen. Um, okay, so how long do you go? Uh, I usually go for about, for about an hour, and that's from when I enter the change room to when I exit. I've also gone for like an hour and a half or 45 minutes, but I usually go for an hour and that's about good. Um, but that's not like an hour straight in the onsen or the sauna or something like that. 
Um, reading online, I'd hear like five to ten minutes in a hot place, and you go out and relax, and you go back in. And that's for the hotter ones, so they can get like 42, 43, 44 degrees Celsius. I think that's around 110 degree, degrees Fahrenheit. But they also have ones that are cooler, which is maybe around like 37 degrees Celsius, so getting close to like body temperature-ish. And those ones, you can actually go for a lot longer, like you can go for like an hour or two, I hear. And um, there's ones you can lie down with a little bit of water, um, or ones that's no water at all, you just lie down. So it really depends on your style. Uh, but on the hotter ones, yeah, I guess you'd get out after about 10 minutes or so, <laughs> and then take a little bit of a break. Uh, next question. How do Japanese people at Onsen react to foreigners? Um, I think, honestly, well, honestly, I can't, an I can't answer the question, honestly, because, um, like, if you go from here, I don't think I look that different um, from a Japanese. You know, skin tone, hair color, eye color. My face looks fairly different. People don't think I'm Japanese, um, but I'm also short, so I don't think I stand out too much. And I tend not to, like, stare at other people, too, so I might not notice things. Um, but generally, I haven't heard any big issues from people going to onsens being a foreigner. I think the, the big thing is if you don't know the rules, um, or if you're being like, you know, like splashing in the water or being loud or putting your, dunking your head in, just doing things that you're not supposed to do, then you'd attract attention. But if you're following the rules, I've seen other foreigners come in and I don't think they cause any problems, so you should be cool. Um, now, and actually, maybe the only thing is they might strike up a conversation with you if you're foreign and ask you like where you're from and be friendly. So I've, I've seen that happen a few times. What do we do if we need to use the washroom? It's a good question because you definitely do not pee in the onsen very bad. Um, almost all the changing rooms will have a toilet in there. So you can just pat yourself dry with a small towel, go to the toilet, done, right? Simple. Now, this another question. Do young people in their 20s I go there as a group, like Girls' Day Out. Is it a destination like a wedding destination? What else do people do at onsens? Okay, so I can only answer this from the guy side. And yes, I've seen groups of guys from like three guys to like a group of ten. Maybe they're classmates or maybe they're on like some sports team or they're um, work colleagues. And they'll talk and these will usually be the louder groups. And yeah, they just hang out and chill. Um, yeah, I think... Girls would do the same thing, as far as I know. And so that um, some, some person asked, did they do this like in the anime? It's like, yeah, girls go on a trip out. Um, our guys go on a trip out to a yokan or onsen town. And they wear like the yukatas and stuff. That, that's the thing that kind of looks like kimono, but it's not. And yeah, that's not just an anime thing. They'll do it. Maybe some things that happen in the animes don't happen in, in the onsens. But yeah, friends will go and have fun. Chill out at the onsen. Um, weddings at yokans, which are the traditional Japanese inns. Some facilities do host weddings, and so that could be a wedding destination. Although I don't think that's the norm. I don't recall seeing a lot of that. But yeah. Now, consequences of peeping over the wall, like in so many anime. Yeah, I don't think that would really fly at all. So, do not try that. Um, but an interesting story is that I went to uh, a famous... Rotenburo, that's like an outdoor um, onsen or bath in Kusatsu, and that's a famous hot spring town. And the guy side is really big, but the guys aren't nearly as protected as the girl sides for privacy. So from across the little stream, there's a hiking path where a lot of people are walking along, and anyone from there can get a full view of the guys, like total <laughs> view. Um, so you're, if you're a perv, you can totally perv in on the guys from that side, but the girls are nicely covered up. Um, so it's the guys that have less privacy. And also something, um, like when my brother went, uh, he noticed that, oh, there's female cleaning staff, uh, that will sometimes come in. So, uh, if you're a guy, it's totally, you can expect to see some females, either like cleaning staff or the masseuses or something in the change room area or even the onsen area, so don't be surprised if you that happens to you. Um, now, reactions. Would people... <laughs> what are people's reactions to sea genitals? I mean, 
everybody's naked, so I don't think anybody's really like, <laughs> like that's it's rude to stare if somebody's like staring at your genitals. So uh, I don't think that happens or that's somebody really weird if they're doing that. I wouldn't worry about it. Everybody just seems pretty natural, honestly. Like, yeah. Onsen, these are female questions now. So onsen while pregnant. And so <clears throat> I looked and there's nothing dangerous about, apparently, but on going to the onsen when you're pregnant. Um, the biggest concern was actually slipping and falling. Um, now, after you give birth, I heard for like six weeks you shouldn't go because um, risk of infections and germs and whatnot. My wife said before you even give birth, she'd worry about that as well. But I guess, I don't know, up to you. But it, there's no you know hard restrictions on that. Um, and then Liel asked if what happens if you're on your period. And this is where I looked online. And one survey I saw said like 75% of women would not go. 25% said they would if they're wearing like a tampon. Um, so there's no hard rules against that either. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, next question, are children allowed? Yes, and I think as soon as I see children walking, I see them going to the onsen. And uh, another person asked, what about you know small children? Can they go on either the guys, the male side or the female side? And yes, as well. So this depends on the facility, but some of them, they have like a height, so up to 120 centimeters. You can go on either side, doesn't matter your gender. Um, other ones, you know, it could be like once you're in elementary school, then you go to either side. And some say like under 10 years old, you can go on either side. Uh, but it definitely happens where, you know, little boys would go on the female side and little girls would go on the male side. So in Japan, nudity in the bathing context, totally cool, totally fine. All right, um, body hair. Someone asked if I have a lot of body hair, you know, what's the deal? Well, as long as the body hair is below your neck level, you're fine, just keep above the neck level out of the onsen. Uh, but in general, yeah, Japanese guys aren't that hairy, uh, but I've seen a few hairy ones and it's fine. Um, okay, that's it. That's all the questions. If you have questions that I didn't answer, I can try and answer them. If I know I'm not a big expert, uh, but if I know something, I'll answer them. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers.